One kind act I did this week. Okay. <laughs> what happened this week, man? In this episode of SG Now, we meet the man who makes masterpieces out of Lego bricks. Join City Joe Abbey for a tiger hunt. Find out why the small sculptures of a model make her all look like LKY. And 1x30 asks if all the national courtesy campaigns have made us a kinder people. Hello and welcome to SG Now. Let us what was your favorite toy when you were young? Hmm, when I was young... Barbie doll? No, I think I really liked to play chef. Wow. So I loved all toys that taught me how to cook. Cutting vegetables or fruits, things like that. Those were my favorite toys. So I guess you can really cook now? Now? Definitely. <laughs> I am a really professional chef. I want to try your food one day. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not sure if you would want to try it. Okay. <laughs> but what about you? What was your favorite? My favorite toys. I like anything that can fly. Oh. Like aeroplane, helicopter, mm. and I like Lego as well. Lego? Yes. Well, then you'll be very excited for oh. our first story today. Yes! Our first story today takes us to the Singapore Science Centre for an exhibition featuring one of the world's most successful and enduring toys, Lego! <laughs> That's right. Lego blocks were the brainchild of Danish toy maker Ole Kirk Christiansen. He produced the first plastic Lego brick in 1949. The toy has since gone on to be sold in more than 130 countries. Wow, I'm really excited. As much as I would love to be the one out there building MBS or something out of Lego blocks, that honour has fallen on young at heart City Joe cousin. When did you get your first Lego set? Uh, I was three years old. Oh, right. Yeah, and my grandmother got it for me. It was a little blue boat and it cost 29 cents. I'm here at the Singapore Science Center for an exhibition called Wonders of the World. It is a display of three-dimensional models, all made from Lego bricks. We get to see the world all through the eyes and mind of Mr. Ryan McNaught, also known as the Brick Man. I can see Ryan's fascination for transportation. It seems like we will travel the world by car, by plane, by boat, and by train. You'll notice we have a lot of uh, workstations here. So basically, we're always encouraging people to either build what we've built or inspire them to build something. I'm the guy who has a Lego story. I got my first Lego set when I was five years old. Oh, awesome. And the first obvious thing we always build is the aeroplane. Cool. Right? And yep. uh, the experience is that the bigger you build it, uh, the more fragile it becomes. Correct. I want to ask you, how did you manage to build a Titanic without it collapsing? Yes, yeah, so this is one of the great yeah. secrets, you see. Yeah. <laughs> so um, often when we're building Lego models, particularly to this scale, we have to incorporate real life engineering. And what I mean by that is you know, engineering principles like real life bridges that hold up a certain way. So we've got what's called a cantilever on the inside of that, which is where actually, see the blue water at the bottom? Right. That is actually the secret to holding that up, wow. in that all the weight gets dispersed amongst the blue base right. at the bottom yeah. and up through the angle that's yeah. there. 
And so without that blue base, it would simply just fall yeah, over. Right, right, right. So we often use real life engineering and mathematics like, yeah. like, like what we spoke about to, to do those. There is much more to Lego than just putting bricks together. Lego builders use the STEM concept of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. What makes a Lego set so wonderful is that kids, young and old, learn as they play. So you started Lego at three, uh -huh. and now you're a big man. Yes. <laughs> so at which point in your life did you decide, okay, this is going to be my job? So I was in my 30s, in my early 30s, and I used to be in IT. I was a chief information officer wearing a suit every day to work. And my boss sat down and said, we need to have a meeting about the number of meetings we're having. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I need to go find some fun. And Lego. Okay. Lovely. There was ample time for me to lay my hands on the Lego bricks. So I left my mark on the Lego wall. Just when I thought the day had ended, I was challenged to build a duck using only six bricks. Yeah, I was supposed to build a duck with uh, six bricks. And, yeah. That was when I knew my Lego journey had only just begun. See you at the wonders of the world. I'm Sidi Joe Carson, Singapore One. And this is the cutest duck in the world. No one has ever thought of using uh, the two red bricks as two separate feet. Yeah. Oh. So this is a very, very interesting duck. It's called the City Joe Duck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow, oh. that was amazing. Yes, incredible. Those blocks, those models looked absolutely realistic. I could not tell that that was Lego at all. Yes, there's seven one of the wall. Mona Lisa and even Titanic! Yeah, I felt like we were brought around a little trip around the world to see the historic sites, the iconic places, just it was so fun. Absolutely, it's like a little tour all over the world. And some of those models must have taken ages to build. Mm -hmm. If you really want to go and see the exhibition and play with all that Lego, look in our program description. That's right. Now, our next story is all about tigers. What better time to promote an awareness of the decline in tiger populations in Southeast Asia than the Year of the Tiger? And what better way to do it than have artists from all over the world paint these life-size tiger statues and then place them in more than 30 locations all over the island. City Joe Abbey met some of these tiger artists to learn more about their inspiration. Hello, hello! Have you been noticing these tigers around? There are more than 30 of them spread across Singapore and besides being really apt for the tiger year, it is also part of WWF's initiatives to raise awareness and funding for endangered tigers in Southeast Asia. Today, I'm going to meet two of the local artists and talk about their design of the tiger and hopefully at the end of the day, I'll come up with my own Abbey Tiger design. The AR Amazing Tiger Trail is a three-part island-wide trail that zooms in on tiger conservation and other key environmental issues. There are more than 30 life-size tiger sculptures exhibited across Singapore at various locations such as Gardens by the Bay, National Gallery, Kampong Glam and Raffles Hotel. The sculptures are designed by a collective of internationally acclaimed artists from Singapore and overseas each presenting their perspective on how climate change, poaching and deforestation is affecting tigers in the wild. So the tiger is called Ghost Tiger, inspired by the Ghost Bike Movement, um, where a white bicycle is placed where um, a cyclist was killed or gravely injured by a motor vehicle. And I think this is apt because one of the last tigers here in Singapore was shot in Raphael's Hotel. The tiger is often looked upon as a um, uh, cultural as well as a spiritual icon. This is a star 
in the Chinese zodiac as well as in uh, the Hindu mythology. So I decided that it is a star all round and how uh, I would choose this particular grey blue color for red and and the yellow being it's bringing light and bringing light means you are able to see and that's how I kind of interpret and created the 2022 stars. Each of the tiger sculptures also comes with a QR code where you can answer fun quizzes about our environment, get exclusive Instagram filters and even unlock new games. For me personally is to share a bit about Singapore's history and about the animals that we have and why we don't see them anymore. The, the tiger is actually so much part of our ecosystem and it, it should not be lost. Well, the initiative by WWF um, is to raise awareness on uh, the decline of tiger population and also the illegal trade that still happens here in Southeast Asia. The, em the amulet is actually a symbol of uh, long life and uh, I'm hoping that uh, when someone actually looks at the emblem will realise that it is actually the tiger is seeking a long life for itself. Okay, time to come up with my design. Okay, I must first apologize, okay? I couldn't find a tiger structure, but I found a cat. And a cat is a smaller version of a tiger, right? So yeah, let's begin. I chose blue because it reminds me of the ocean and added some grey to create colour texture. I made use of recycled plastic because upcycling is one of the many ways we can do our part for the environment. Ta-da! Here's the end product and I call it the Water Breath Tiger. So, what do you think of my tiger? Bringing it back to the tiger trail, I think it's great that we have such initiatives. It sparks conversation and hopefully with the increased awareness, then the next step is how do we solve this problem? So visit the Tiger Trail while you can and you can even donate to their cause. This is City Joe Abby from Singapore One. Wow, great works of art for a good cause. And I think Abby's Water Breath Tiger deserves a much bigger audience. Agree? <laughs> Agreed. She is definitely cut out to be an artist. Yes. <laughs> but on a more serious note, I think this initiative is truly great. The problem of endangered animals is something that is easily overlooked in my opinion. We cannot directly experience its effects, so people might just neglect this issue. So this initiative is really great to have the tigers around us, to consistently remind people that this is an issue that is happening right now. Yes, it's a good cause. Keep up the great work. Exactly. Now, our third story today is about art of a different kind. Wow. <laughs> Model maker Christopher Pereira, better known as the Tree Wizard, makes die-cast limited edition models of a man who should be very familiar to Singaporeans everywhere. Yo, what's up Singapore? The late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew is considered one of the greatest leaders that ever lived. Even until today, he is well loved and admired by people from around the world. Well, I'm all dressed up and on my way to meet Christopher Pereira, who has taken his admiration for the late LKY to a whole new different level. Hey Chris! Hi Bruce! Wow, uh, the pieces are so unique that um, it's never been seen in public. Oh wow! Okay, um, what you see here uh, is about 100,000 plus plus. Okay, the figurines here is not raising whatever. You can feel it, right? Wow! Hey! Wait, hit it's, me there! It's die cast. It's die like, cast? Yeah. Oh, guys, die cast figurine. So, it's very heavy, le. So, these are, these are prototypes. The first prototype. Okay. It's another <gasps> prototype. Okay. Wow. All well, it's a prototype. Okay. So you can see the colors and everything for prototype. So there's two. So this is only the basic of the prototype. 
so Christopher, I, I noticed something uh, very familiar about all your figurines. Okay. The face looks very familiar. Uh, it? It's Nick on you. It's LK1. No wonder la. Okay, the, the whole, um, the whole, um, when people look at me, right, it's actually I'm the Lee Kuan Yew guy. Um, what happened was uh, Lee Kuan Yew actually got all the full collection, what you go up to see. Oh, wow. Okay. You gave it to him? Yes. Oh, wow. But okay. Of course, when you say give it to him, uh, a lot of people misconceptualize that. Uh, these are all done like maybe one week, two weeks, mm. two months, whatever. Mm. No, this was done in the lapse of 30 years. Show me your limited edition pieces that you just did for, for Ukraine. Come on, come on, show it to me. Okay. Um, each one is actually certif has a certificate of each figurine. So what you what you want to see is actually 92 figurines specially made for the red box. Oh wow, okay. Okay, but this particular one for Ukraine is actually individual one piece limited edition. That means to say that it never been done okay. before. Can we open? Sure, open. Let's do this. Uh, oh, wow, I got set. Uh. This is a set. I see. Oh, I got certificate. Okay. okay. I leave the set. Yeah, all righty. Okay. okay. Okay, world piece uh, 056 out oh, of 92 pieces. Uh, Three Wizard is my name. I lower here. Okay. okay, this is actually the uh, the base plate, mm -hmm. each individual base plate. Mm. Okay, has got the um, okay, each individual base plate has got a serial number here, as you can see. Okay, okay, oh wow, okay, Ukrainian colors of the Ukra Ukrainian, Ukrainian flag, flag huh? Yeah. May I? Yeah, yeah, sure, careful. Oh, what have you? Guys, number one! Christopher then went on to unbox a few more that he had brought along to show them to me. All of them he has spent many hours making. And I must say, each and every piece was a labour of love. Of them all, two were my absolute favourite. Had sandbags made with recycled Starbucks tea bags, and the other, a flag made with a recycled Heineken beer can. Okay, Bruce, I got something for you. Oh, what is it? Uh, yeah, a little souvenir. Okay, what, what is it? Have a look. Guys. Our president, Alima Yako. You made this yourself? Yep. What, thanks man, bro. Let's all do our part to make this world a better place. Peace and not war. This is Bruce for Singapore One. Thanks, Bruce. I'm sure the model of President Halima Yaakob is now proudly displayed in Bruce's home. And rightly so, I have to say. Our final video today is a 1x30 report dealing with something we should never have too little of or can never have too much of. Kindness. Kindness. Nick, have you done any acts of kindness recently? Recently? Um, my neighbor's entire family was down with COVID and actually brought some noodles over for them for dinner. Wow, that is so nice of you. <laughs> how about you, Gladys? Hmm, wait. This feels like a test <laughs> on how kind we actually are. No, we're just sharing our experiences. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. Um, just to share, I was at an event recently and I met an acquaintance. We're not really close right. at all. But I noticed that she was really saddened over an event that happened. So I reached out to her to let her know that I'm on her side. And then at the end of the day, I gave her another text through my phone to let her know that I care and I hope that she's feeling better. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. But I honestly don't think that this is something um, that we made consciously. We were just naturally worried about our neighbour, about our friend. Mm. And I don't think an act of kindness is something that we have to do with big steps. It could just be something really small. Yes, I agree. A simple word or a simple gestures actually have great impact, right? Our city just took to the street as usual to ask Singaporeans the simple question. What acts of kindness have you performed recently? Like racism is educated them, but also being a stupid point of question is really loud. Okay, that's all. I helped a colleague uh, tapao koi 
Mm, recently, I did not do any kayak because of COVID. Uh, you know, I brought my client, uh, no, my mental illness uh, client around for medical escort, and yeah. I picked up some litter on the floor, and I just threw it in the rubbish bin. One kind act I did this week. Okay. <laughs> what happened this week, man? I've donated a bunch of clothes to Salvation Army. Uh, I bought lunch for a friend who wasn't feeling too well. I don't think I've done any kind act per se this whole week. Flatten my carton boxes before I put into the recycle. Um, I think it was, it was during the rain season, so there was this elderly who was like crossing the road. So I offered my umbrella to share with um, him. Would be taking out my own money to make Christmas tactile cards for my deafblind clients. I was helping him make Christmas This week. I let someone cross the road uh, while I was driving, even though um, it was not the person's right of way. Comfort my friend when uh, he was not feeling well about his O-level results. So yesterday, during my coffee run, I bought an extra cup for my colleague. I always pass by these like elderly who like sell tissues, so I usually like give like $2 every week. I try to lah, yeah. I saved and... What is a bug? A bug, it's like a bug. The bug was trapped in some sort of gel, then I just like free it and then let it go. I don't know whether the question is a kind act or not lah. I treated my friend to a, to a nice dinner. I think it's more like appreciating uh, my loved ones, doing small little deeds for them, uh, things that I don't usually do. Yep. Okay, so? Personally, like, if anyone's stuck with anything in a class or something, then both of us try to help each other. Today, when we were playing basketball, some guys felt left out. Like, there's something called sub. So I decided to like help them by subbing out myself. Uh, I donated all my good books to Dignity Moms. I listened to uh, those people telling me um, their journey in um, overcoming the pandemic. Well, it's not really a kind act, but it's like a natural thing to do at home. Just help out with the house chores. Nani? I help her uh, yeah, get a SIM card and uh, basically when she asks questions about the country, then I replied her. I was alighting the bus and there was an old lady, she was carrying a lot of uh, uh, plastic bags, yeah, groceries. Then like, I helped her because she, she looked like she needed help. Old lady because she, fell, she like, suddenly fell down on the floor. Then there was no one around to help. So I decided to help her because her leg like, got some, some problem. <laughs> Uh, I'm a wedding host and singer, so I uh, I have a couple basically, you know, uh, her family member isn't doing very very well. So my, my, my bride requested if I could like a, do a downsize, downgrade kind of thing, from an MC band to a, just an MC thing. And even so, the, the the event is going to be a lot smaller. So there was a lot of things to be changed and, and done. So I think that's the least of, of kindness and warmth we could try and provide for someone in need, lah. Mm. I guess just today I. I gave my friend some money to buy lunch because he forgot to bring his wallet. He just came back from competition and he was quite hungry. Uh. My teacher used to say, kindness costs nothing. I've always thought that was worth remembering. Yes, kindness is not only about the large acts. Often it's the little things that matter. A heartfelt word, a helping hand, an understanding smile or a gentle hug. Things that often go unnoticed by others, but make a difference to the receiver. Yes, what matters is to show we care. Exactly. And that's all we have for you today. We know there's a lot of different channels on YouTube these days, so the fact that you chose to spend your time with us means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And see you next time on SG Now. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>